Welcome to Startup Health TV, where we celebrate the entrepreneurs and the innovators who are transforming health. I'm your host, Logan Plaster, here this morning with Jeff Wanzura, CEO of Keep. Jeff, always good to see you. Thanks for having me, Logan. All right. I love what you're doing. It's been exciting to watch your journey as you've brought uh, a sense of high design to the area of, of medication adherence and medication storage, and you've brought something with us today. So why don't you explain what you're building? Yeah, so what we've developed is the first world's smart medicine cabinet and intervention platform. So we essentially said, how do we start to meet patients on their terms in their home where the majority of the healthcare actions take place? And we often heard from patients that we were serving prior is, how do you make my life easier, not tougher, but how do you still have that support mechanism in place to provide that intervention, especially when I need it, at a term that makes sense to me, not necessarily treat me as a patient, but as a person first. Okay, okay. Let's talk about the actual uh, device you've brought with us. All right, so this is the smart medicine cabinet. What we've essentially said is, how do we maintain the same type of process for the patient, for the pharmacy, and for the pharmaceutical company that manufactures these products? So you maintain every process. The pharmaceutical pa company doesn't have to change packaging. They don't have to change any type of regulatory environment. The second is, from a pharmacy, they don't have to fill certain cartons, change any type of fulfillment processes. And the third, for the patient, we let the technology do the heavy lifting. The only thing that they have to do is put their medications in the secure smart medicine cabinet, and we provide the prompts, the interview and the type of support that they need at that specific point in time. So I can give you a quick demo yeah, do if it. you want to do that. So you'd put this medication cabinet, prominent place in your home. What we often say is medications discreetly stored in plain sight. You get a notification on the front of the box when a dose is due, and you never have to log into an app on a day-to-day -day basis. You simply double tap the side of the box. Wow. Okay. You receive your medications as you typically would. You take it out, there's a weight-based sensor in the device itself, so we can start to see that one, an item is removed, place back in, and that change in weight. Now let's say a dosing event doesn't occur, this is where the magic starts to happen. So is there some educational content, some behavioral nudges, could we involve a caregiver, a family member, a loved one to help you along your journey? And also could we inform a patient support program, a pharmacy, to help you with that specific impediment that you have to your therapy. So we're starting to get a lot of traction in Paul signing a deal with McKesson Canada on the specialty pharmacy side. Okay. We have a couple of pharma partnerships that are going to be announcing that in a couple of weeks. And this is where we're starting to see in the specialty side in particular, how do we identify, triage, and support that patient and understand what interventions are actually working on a patient-specific basis. Got it. Let's talk about the challenge of medication safety a minute and just kind of put a, put a face on that. If you've got a medicine cabinet full of pills, which is probably 99% of people who have uh, daily, uh, you know, medication intake, um, you know, what kind of risk profile is that? Yeah, so from a stat standpoint, every nine minutes a child is rushed to the ER due to medication related poisoning. Now, when you look at those stats, it's, it's very, again, frightening just to see how medications are being stored. And the way we stored medications in the home hasn't changed over the last 20, 30, 40, 50 years. Everyone thinks there's medications being stored in a medicine cabinet in a bathroom. And that's not the safest place for curious eyes, curious hands, one from a privacy angle and two from a safety. So we essentially said, how do you still provide a mechanism to have these medications safely stored, but still have that notification or still have them easily accessible. Mm -hmm. And this is where we start to have that blend of almost what we call healthware. So how do you have this, this home health type of experience yeah. in a way that makes sense for, again, the aesthetically type of place where you're excited and, again, quite excited to put this on a mantle or in a yeah. place in the home. Yeah, obviously the aesthetics are really important to your team. I think you've won design awards for, you know, some of your designs in the past. Um, Talk to me about where the industry stands in terms of its interest in medication adherence because it's been a conversation for so long to say, you know, we can have all the greatest therapies in the world, but if people aren't taking them, we're wasting money, people are dying, and yet this has been a decades-long sort of conversation. So, like, where are we at in the innovation cycle of, like, putting the money into it, putting the time into it, and addressing that problem? Yeah, no, it's a good call out. And there's been so much conversation, discussion around medication adherence. And in our view, there's really three primary challenges why these these other solutions haven't solved. So one, they insert more friction into the patient journey. You're asking a patient who's non-adherent to manually log into an app and say they've taken their medication. Yeah. Is that making their life harder or easier? In our view, that's harder. And how do we reduce friction, make it more seamless experience? The second is a lot of these solutions have tried to change the pharmacy fulfillment workflows. And what we often say is if you want a good idea to die, try changing healthcare professional behaviors and workflows. So how can we start to have that type of experience that still captures the data but doesn't create more friction or change management 
type of workflow in that process. And I say the third is the category of medications that we're supporting on the specialty side lend itself to having a lot of tools at our disposal on how do we best intervene and measure whether or not that specific intervention is working. So this is where we start. To, it's not a static type of development. It's not a static type of intervention. We start to learn, understand on a patient-specific basis, whether that be age cohorts, location, other types of information that we can discern, apply an intervention, and later that day or the next day, see whether or not that particular intervention helped get a patient back on track. Got it. Because that calibration loop is absolutely critical if we don't have that real-world feedback to inform how you intervene with the next patient that fits that profile. Got it. Uh, talk to me about what your go-to-market has looked like over the last year and kind of what you're looking for for the next year. Obviously, this has like kind of a direct-to-consumer uh, vibe to it because I look at it and I would like one in my house and yet you've also mentioned the idea of specialty pharma working with a pharmaceutical company maybe that has a high priced drug so there's just a range of ways that you could come to market so what's the strategy? Yeah so we've had this ground of support directly from patients we can't make them fast enough on the direct to patient side okay. and this is again retailers direct to consumer a number of different channels and what we view this as is how do we have this opportunity to, to one solve a patient problem and two garner feedback from specific people and specific therapeutic areas that lend itself to the enterprise. So the other sales motion is we signed a deal with McKesson on the specialty pharmacy side. We have two pharma companies that we're going to be announcing shortly here. And we also have a number of um, opportunities with specialty pharmacy patient support programs, what's known as hub services. Okay. So this is where, again, we can supercharge through data and that type of exposure we have to the home in a way that we can better support patients based on their specific needs at specific points in time. So is the model with a McKesson or with a specialty pharma a journey to send somebody home with the prescription and the box? Yeah, so the box would always stay in the patient's home. Yeah. Nothing changes for our specialty pharmacy or patient support program partners. We let the technology do the heavy lifting. Yeah. So they receive the box and the medication is fulfilled as it typically would. Okay. The only thing that changes, you put your medication in a secure location. And this is where we start to see our enterprise partners where we can broadly deploy and scale up extremely fast, just given the fact that we don't change anything in that, that process or that workflow. Interesting. Um, it strikes me as the kind of technology that once you develop the relationship with the, the patient, that you start to be able to build other sort of touch points with them? Like, what's your sort of future vision for that? Yeah, so you must have uh, some insight into our product roadmap. <laughs> but what we essentially said is, well, the medication is the most common thread to any chronic condition. Yeah. So if we can solve for medication management, we have a lot of latitude and leverage to supply and an opportunity to provide more support to that mm -hmm. patient experience. So it's on a really a therapeutic area specific basis. So if you start to think respiratory conditions versus cardiometabolic, how can we start to bundle in other type of care management strategies that really focus on the core coordination of medication management and this is really what unlocks so really what we're doing is building that scale on a horizontal standpoint which allows us to go deep in certain therapeutic areas and essentially say well this is where we're adding the most value what other types of tech companies could we partner with and what other types of care coordination activities could we help solve for that patient and it's all based on the fact that we have this common thread to a chronic condition being the medication management in the home it kind of strikes me that you're sort of on the bleeding edge of the smart home concept because instead of having to rewire your entire home, you're bringing in a device that starts to make your home smarter without having to, having to have an entire smart home. Um, the design element is really unique because you start to incorporate, like you said, healthware. You start to incorporate health technology into your home because you like it. You know, and not just because you're sick and you have to do this thing your doctor told you. Yeah, 100%. And we've really tried to change our language internally. It's, it's not patients, it's people. Yeah. How do we solve for this people first problem? And we always laugh internally. It's like we, we have more data on the temperature of our homes when our blinds are open or closed or these types of parameters. But the most important thing to anyone is their health. Mm. And we're really starting to fall behind when we don't treat that experience in the same type of capacity. So how can we bring this very pleasant, user-friendly experience that is managing the most critical part of their day-to-day -day journey? And again, not to set aside the, the thermostat and other types of things that are, again, smart IoT devices in the home, but how can we solve for a more meaningful problem when people are having troubles <coughs> adhering and managing their medications? Yeah. Last question I have to ask, am, <laughs> am I able to buy one? Is it, is it for sale for consumers? You got it. So if you go to our website, discoverkeep.com, you can buy it direct to consumer. And this is where we love to see, again, the people that are trying to solve a problem, whether it's medication safety, medication management, or core care coordination. 
this is really where we're starting to see, again, the gravitation towards different types of use cases. And we always love to have, again, people like you going on our website and purchasing our products. So thank nice. you. Nice. Jeff, it's been awesome to see this progress. It's great to see a working, uh, you know, a working product that's purchasable. And it's interesting to see the two sides of the market as you're going towards consumers and specialty pharma. So uh, we'll be watching your, your progress in the year to come. Awesome. Thank you for having right, me once again. Thanks, Jeff.